we've all heard the saying, I'm a GC stuck in plat, aka Grand Plats. Believe it or not, these really exist in the wild. Rocket League is full of them. Their typical excuses for not being a grand champ include blaming teammates for bad positioning, claiming they recently played with a friend who sucks because they're so generous, or that they're really just not trying or having a bad day. Something about the platinum ranks and the decent amount of hours you put in the game might go to your head. But today we're going to find out, is there any truth to this wild statement? Are there really GCs stuck in plat? To test this, I went and found my local neighborhood Grand Plat and asked him to compete in a series of challenges. The first challenge will be a standard 1v1 to establish a baseline. After that, there will be a series of handicaps on the Grand Champion, or me, until finally the Plat wins a match. But the question is, how long does that take? Let's find out. To begin, we started with the 1v1 match. But before we get into the match, I just want to say thank you to everyone. We hit 100 subscribers in less than two weeks, and that is insane. The response on this channel has been amazing. You guys have been awesome. I mean, look at all this. So I'm going to give away free coaching once we hit 500 subscribers. All you have to do is subscribe now, and you will be entered for that giveaway when we reach that number. So stay tuned, and let's get to the match. So right after the kickoff, the plat made a huge whiff, which led to an open goal on my end which was a super strong start. Then, I don't know if I was nervous or what, like I didn't want to look bad, but I had a horrible challenge there and definitely gave away a goal. And you know what, no excuses, that's on me. Then finally we had a nice kickoff and I had a nice little touch. He didn't really chase the ball here, so I had plenty of room to shoot a banger onto net. And I was up, and eventually I was up 3-1, and here's kind of a highlight right here. I had a nice little flipper set on him, which I don't think he expected at all. Despite a mess up in the beginning, I was starting to get into a rhythm. I had a nice touch here, but accidentally hit it with the back of my car. Then right here, I got a nice touch and he went for boost, even though I had just taken it. That's okay. And pretty soon I had a nice lead at 6-1. For some reason, he didn't expect me to get a ceiling touch at all. Maybe they don't do those in plat, but um, then I had another setup. I thought about going for an air dribble, but I noticed he wasn't up to challenge me. So I decided to take control and just pop it past him. Wasn't much of a crazy shot, but it was enough to get it in. Now I'm up 9-1, so this game was running away quickly. Had another opportunity here, able to get a nice ceiling touch, and bang it in the corner. As you can see, he didn't quite play fast enough, so it just kind of shows the difference. And eventually this game was basically over. I just kind of started messing with him, going with some nice flicks, and the 1v1 turned out pretty well. The plaid gave me a lot of respect on the field, which opened up the door for tons of opportunities. All I had to do is take control of the ball and get it past him. And this happened many times. But I didn't exactly shut him out entirely. We had a nice kickoff right here that actually went his way. And he gets his first kickoff goal. I'm kidding, no, I definitely saved it. I took it up the corner with full possession. I guess I thought it was a freestyler and completely missed here. And he actually got a bad touch as well. So that opened up a really easy goal that I threw. And he's still in the wrong position. So I'm able to take possession back of the play. Now I'm up 17-1. I've got another fun opportunity. I go for some sort of crazy ceiling shot. And uh, he does get it past me. So good for him. And he actually turns it into a goal. So super proud of him. 17-2 was our final score of the 1v1, now it was time for the first handicap. I had to keep driving no matter what. I literally taped down my trigger to do this. So this match was definitely different to say the least. Now I'm gonna note, I'm able to break by pressing the left trigger, in my case that's reverse, so if you see me stopping, I promise I still have the other trigger pulled down. The game started out really strong, I had one goal with that nice flick earlier. And I challenged really early here, which was a mistake, and he actually got a pretty nice flick. I felt like when I was forced to keep driving, I just wanted to keep attacking the ball. So all my kickoffs and challenges felt a little bit awkward. Eventually, I noticed he went for boost on the right corner, so all I had to do was put it in. And I was up 2-1, so got a nice lead here early on. And this game still felt a little bit closer. He challenged a little bit too late there, so I got another goal, 3-1 and I was starting to feel pretty confident even with this weird handicap. He actually got it past me right there. My drift was pretty poor if I had to say so myself. So 
got it a little bit tighter. Then he whiffs a little bit of a banger and kind of gives me possession by donating the ball right here. Thank you for the charity. And I'm able to put that right in. I was starting to build a kind of nice lead on this plat and was feeling pretty good about my chances of winning more matches against him. As you can see, I just kind of messed around with power slide and went for balls that I knew he didn't even think I was capable of going for. With a 6-2 lead, all he has to do is save the ball right here, and thankfully, he totally whiffs, and I have another open goal. So that's that uh, plat mechanics right there. To be fair, I'm not trying to diss plats or anything. I'm just trying to compare the differences between a grand champ and plat, and see if there's any hope to the saying that plats can beat a grand champ. Now that the first game was over, it's time for the next challenge. I had no boost at all. I knew kickoffs would probably be the hardest part about this, but thankfully he kind of botched it there and I was able to get a kickoff goal back on him. I was coming up with my strategy, how did I want to play, did I want to play fast, slow. I did not boost, so I knew that making saves would be tough, but thankfully I'm pretty good with my double jumps. This next play was actually really tough, because I had full possession, but I knew I couldn't flick it over or really get it on top of my car. Thankfully, he kind of missed an opportunity there, and he takes it to the corner. He grabs boost. Imagine going for boost. Couldn't. Um, and he decides to try to bang it off the corner. I catch him really early, and he doesn't expect that, so he takes it back up the corner, using up probably 200 boost there, grabs more boost, and I'm able to get a nice counter right there. It's time to play it up the corner. I knew I had to get it past him, but he actually gets a nice touch to the side. Then I go for the fake and get him, and that's going to be the second goal of the game. Once I had a nice lead, the corner kickoffs came, and this is what I was worried about. All he has to do is bang it, but he kind of plays slow, and I just pinch it right off his car and right into the net. I'll save you some details, and now I'm up 7-0, and I decide it's time to go for an interesting kickoff save here. Thankfully, I read the bounce pretty well and actually read his shot as well, and that leads to another goal, and I'm up 8-0. This game got away pretty quick, and I'm up 10-0. Then he finally scores his first kickoff goal. And honestly, that was about the end of this game, so nothing more exciting to report. For my next challenge, I can't jump. I've got boost, but I just can't leave the ground. All he has to do to score is just hit it over me, so I knew this was going to be really tough. With boost though, I felt like I had decent ball control, so I was able to kind of mess him up a little bit. He read mine right there. And this was going to be tough. I felt so stuck, you know. I challenge a little bit earlier, try to keep him off pace, and I get a nice bump. Then I kind of bang it right off the bounce and actually score a first goal, even without jumps. I thought my lead wouldn't last long, and he actually gets a nice kickoff here that is just about impossible to save. I decided to change up my kickoff strategy and let him hit it to me. So he hits it on the ground for some reason, and I'm able to just kind of bang it back into his net. Is what I would have said had I actually made contact with the ball, and now I kind of put myself in a bad situation. He does get it past me. I try to recover. I'm pretty much using all my boost that I can get at this point, and he has an opportunity. But he hits a really weak flick, and I take possession. Now I've got control one more time. And I'm able to kind of freak him out here, and I whiff again! All I have to do is score, but he gets a nice save. And I go for the shot, and whiff. Guys, this is so hard, you don't understand. <laughs> and then I try to bang it, and I don't really get much of a shot here. So I play defensively, try to get another, uh, another good save. And we played off the wall. I knew I wasn't able to jump off the wall, so I kind of play slow and go for the demo. Now I've got an open net, and I can just bang it in. Alright, I'm up 2-1. I want to keep this lead up because I knew scoring was going to be tough. Thankfully, he passes right to me, and I get another goal. So maybe it won't be that tough. Up 4-1, I decide to go for the uh, read, and I don't get it. Kickoff goals were kind of my nightmare, but thankfully, he kind of gave me the ball a couple times. As we keep playing, he decides to not challenge me there, and I'm able to get possession and just kind of flick it past him. Now I'm up 6-2, the game is getting away from him, he starts playing a little bit more aggressive, doesn't quite make the contact he wants, and I just go for the demos. Demos were probably the best way to score in this, because if I stay low, he has no chance. He has a nice challenge, and actually gets the ball away from me, but there's only two seconds left, and the ball's down. 
At this point, I'm running out of handicaps, so I just take away a boost and jump. I basically become a bot. It's almost impossible for him to lose this, so I just try to play fast and play early, and hopefully catch him off guard. At this point, I've already proven that a plat probably can't beat a grand champ hardly ever, even though this plat particularly was very confident when he DM'd me about playing in this match, um, but sadly I even score a goal with no boost and no jump. He does tie back up with a kickoff goal, so I decided not to show that because I was embarrassed, and he gets another kickoff goal, and that's kind of going to be the story of this game. So I go for the squishy save and actually bang it, which I was super happy about because I had to just fall off the ceiling. And we keep playing the match out. Now it's 1-2, and the, this game actually got pretty tight. So he challenges me in the corner, which I wouldn't normally recommend to most people, but hey, you do you. And he actually does get it past me because I'm a helpless little bot in the middle of the field. Now it's 1-3. I want to prove something. I should be able to score even without boost and jump. It's got to be possible, right? So I start taking control of the ball, try to play him quickly, and I get it past him. And there's the goal I was looking for. Coming into this match, my goal was to score two goals, and I've already met it. So now I just start playing with him, and he just has a total whiff there. So now it's tied, 3-3, three, three. no boost and no jump. I go for the squishy save, but he does the smart thing and hits it low, which catches me off guard. He actually scores another kickoff goal, and now it's 5-3, and he gets another one, and now it's 6-3. So I knew this match was going to be tough for me, but I keep playing. I actually get a nice chance there, don't quite get it. He's able to just keep playing fast. I keep chasing him down the field, and he actually gets a nice flick. So I was pretty impressed and happy for him. He's finally showing up. Maybe he has a chance to beat a grand champ after all this time. So at 3-7, I try my best to ball him, which I do. We get it past him. It was a slow play, but that's all it takes. Now it's 4-7. I want to tie this game up, so I keep playing hard. I play against the corner. He gets a pretty weak touch, which leads an opportunity. I get a nice touch off the bounce. Now I want to score. I wait, bait him out, and shoot over his head. And he whiffs. That's 5-7. This is a two-goal game. It's a kickoff. We all hate kickoffs. I go for the squishy save and get it again. I want to tie this game up so bad, so I keep playing fast. I try to take possession, because that seems to work pretty well against him. He gives me a lot of room and a lot of space. I try to fake him, and he doesn't fall for it. Then he starts to bang it downfield, and I knew I'm probably not going to tie this game up, which was tough. So it's 5-8. I have to keep going for these weird saves. I thought he'd go low, and I actually was right, so I get it past him. I keep driving helplessly around the field as if I've just learned to play the game and I missed that shot, which was tough. Then he's got possession and he bumps me. I might be able to recover. He bangs it up the wall, but I'm able to read the wall pretty well. And I've got a totally open net. He could easily come save this, right? Isn't he gonna save it? Let's, let's look at what happened. What did the plaid decide to do in this moment? As we can see, He's driving back, all he has to do is go for the ball, but what does the plot do? A, does he go drive towards the ball, or B, does he flip towards the ball? No, it's actually D. He goes for boost. It's boost time, and that <laughs> costs him another goal, as we can see. So let's go back to me, and uh, watch me walk this ball in. Alright, with 6-8, I feel pretty good. There's only 7 seconds left on the clock, so I try to just keep it and make it a 2-goal game because I think that's a pretty good score with no boost and no jump against the Platt. So the Platt finally won a match. Let's go. No boost, no jump, but hey, he got me. So to answer our question, can a Platt ever beat a GC? Are Grand Platts really out there? The answer is no, no, they can't. Stop. You want a part two with a different Platt? Let me know in the comments.